I think I see every man as a threat. to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet then make sure that you click the subscribe button below and join the revolution so as you guys can see I am not sitting by myself I'm sitting with two lovely ladies ladies can you please introduce yourself you can start over here okay, I... this is a new face <laughs> this is a new face actually hello say hello to hello. the baby <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Hello, I am Viti Valatish Lashwedi and I'm currently studying at the University of Pretoria and I'm also a freelance dancer. I'm Lerato. I'm Lerato, that's it. Stop. Jokes, jokes. I'm gonna you do know, that again. You should have seen my hair. <laughs> <laughs> you can even go back to it. It was literally like a whole thing. Like, yeah, make a table, guys. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Yes. <laughs> Come um, I'm Lerato, I'm a Shiho. Um, yeah, I'm their age and we chill and stuff sometimes. Oh! Why are we chilling and stuff sometimes? <laughs> anyway, guys, so the reason why I have these two lovely ladies here is today we're going to be talking about the dunch. Men, 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 men. And what our relationship <laughs> with men is. But wait! We're going to be talking about how gender-based violence has influenced our perspective or um yeah, perspective and opinion of men as young women. Now before we get started, I just want to say that no one person or no three people mm -hmm. can ever speak on behalf of an entire group. Meaning we, this is our opinion based on our experiences, the things we've learned, the things we've seen. We cannot and do not speak for all women. Mm -hmm. We do not speak for all people our age. We do not speak for all South Africans, guys. So I just want to put that out there. And if you do have a difference in opinion, then comment down below and let's have a conversation so let's get started a little bit of an intro now I feel like I'm talking a lot but a little bit of an intro I had a conversation with um, an older woman and I asked her what was the view that women had in your time when you were younger about men at the time like when you were around our age what was your attitude towards men and she said something interesting she was like by that time men were known for not showing up um, and in that you'll be married to them but you'll find that you are basically a single wife or a single a single mother meaning you have a husband but maybe he's never there for you emotionally or he's never around or he's the father of your children however you find yourself really emotionally raising them by yourself um, though he may actually contribute financially now of course this doesn't represent all men at the time but this was some of the attitudes that women had in that time and that made me think about our generation and how we seem to view men or how um, we see women view men and again this differs from person to person but generally speaking um, and speaking for South Africa I think there tends to be an attitude of um, just always complaining about men really disliking men you will hear phrases like men will embarrass you and what else never trust in daughter or in daughter is a man or you know those kinds of things where it's like men it's sort of like a lack of faith in men, but still wanting them though to give us money or you know to contribute financially So that's a general um, Trend that I've witnessed. So now that I've given that bit of an introduction now We can get started with the real conversation and I want to start off by talking about gender-based violence So I think South Africa is was it number one bro? Number one, number one uh, Most dangerous place in the world for women and I think we are either the number one red capital or number three somewhere there by top five We are up there. Um, there's a huge Huge, unfortunately, um, there's a huge problem of gender-based violence in South Africa. So I want to ask you guys, how has that reality, being a woman in South Africa and seeing what men have done, and maybe something's been done to you as well, or your friends, how has that impacted your view and relationship with men? I don't know, even when these stats were like being reported and like when it started, because you know how social media has exposed a lot of stuff, I always felt like... It was always there, mm -hmm. but we can speak about it now. We've got spaces to like really get into stuff and to hear about stuff more and a lot faster. Mm -hmm. You know, if something happens to me now, God forbid, but if something happens to me now, I can tweet about it right now. Mm -hmm. You can know about it right now. And you'll alert everyone. You know what I mean? And um, 
an ordinary person um, is not going to make it onto the news, the seven o'clock news. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And because of how often it happens, we're not, we don't know everyone that goes through these things. You get what I mean? But for me personally, I can't lie to you. Growing up, um, in certain things, um, like wearing shorts or like a mini skirt, as a child, literally as a child, Oaks, um, I'd be told. No, like you can't be in certain spaces like that because, and not told in a weird way like to condemn you or anything because the reality is that there are men that will take you, they will rape you, they'll drag you to the middle of nowhere and kill you and dump your body there. Yeah. You know, um, it was never from a weird place. It wasn't, it was the truth of the matter because these are things that she's heard of, some of which she knew personally, some of the victims mm -hmm. or whatever the case is, but that has been the reality. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, um, with everything happening now, I mean, of course, it is going to scare you. You are a female, a woman, a girl, child in this new reality mm. where it, it's, it's not even, I don't know, it doesn't hit, I don't want to say it doesn't hit as hard, but it's, it's just so almost normal, which is so sickening. Mm. But it's so normal how we hear or we expect to hear about someone being raped or someone being killed by their partner or this or that or the other. You know what I mean? Um, but again, it, it's it, it's not a new phenomenon, if that makes sense. Mm. These are things that I, I don't know about you guys. I don't know if you guys were made aware of those realities, mm. but these are things that I knew were there. These are the dangers that I knew existed. And... Um, even growing up, those are things that I kept in mind for myself and some of the decisions that I made of, may have made rather, excuse me, um, in certain instances were partly or largely um, dependent on that, not dependent, what's the word? Like your decisions were based on Affect, that? Yeah, based on that and, and affected by that because I knew that this, is, this could, that could be me. I could be that girl that's going somewhere to innocently buy chocolates or ice cream or whatever and someone's gonna take me and do God knows what with me and then that's it, my family won't know where to find me, you know? With that being said, now as you've gotten older, how has that influenced how you interact with men and how you view men in general as a woman now? I'm not that old, first of all. Bruh. <laughs> but, um... <clears throat> I don't know, it's tricky because the men that are in my life, like actively in my life for for the most part, I think, um, they've, they've taught me different things about what a man is or what a man should be, of course, and they've, they've shaped a whole lot of those perceptions and ideas. And I think um, in as much as I always knew that those are real things and real people, I also knew that they are like men that don't do that mm -hmm. i was i was surrounded by a lot of different men from different walks of life um not in a weird way obviously mm -hmm. but you know that also show you the other reality yes. you know and and i'm very grateful for that and those people um and even the women in my life for not pushing the agenda of your men are the scum of the earth because mm -hmm. I am aware of, of the other side, mm. the other side to the coin, mm. you know, and not the one hasn't overshadowed the other, but you're just very conscious of both ends. And I, I suppose it's helped a lot also in knowing when to be cautious, not when to be cautious so much, but to be cautious overall and to be able to set certain boundaries. Most importantly, I think being able to set certain boundaries, even with people that are not going to end up raping you but you know just in your relationship with men it's it's allowed me to to view things in many instances for what they were and not you know some perverted overview or whatever um yeah i think i think i've had a relatively healthy balance mm -hmm. let me just so put that i am the complete opposite i think growing up i was so shielded by that like rape movies mm -hmm. You know, like I yeah. never, like my parents would never speak about stuff like that. Like my parents are very open about like, this is what sex is. This is this is this and this mm -hmm. is this. But I think that's because of like the field that they work in. But the violent side of it, I was never exposed to that. Even high school, still in a bubble. That will never happen to my friend. That will never happen to people we know. Like that was honestly just something so far fetched. Mm -hmm. And then that I, did. That I can't even imagine it. Mm -hmm. But. Growing up, I think becoming 
let me say from grade 10 and then first year varsity with um nene and her passing that's when things got really real for me because now i'm in hatfield and like girls are coming out about this happened to me this guy did this to me and then five other girls being like yeah this guy this mm. this happened to me and the like one guy that was actually a, a perpetrator was actually the same guy who was standing outside of my door nights on nights on nights on nights on nights dude to the point where he would sit outside of my door and knock for me to open sure and the thing is i'm in that situation like you know how i am i'm a very like i give people so much grace to mm -hmm. the point where mm -hmm. it's like so it's dangerous for me as well yeah. but i don't even realize it because i'm like oh man he was probably trying to be nice yeah, you're like, trying to make excuses exactly and i never trusted my own instinct mm -hmm. And that's one thing that I actually learned from like Oprah Winfrey show that she says that human beings are the only ones that don't trust their human instincts. Like animals do, as soon as they smell fear, mm. they're gone. For us, it's like, okay, let me try be nice. You know, yeah. maybe I don't want to seem mean. I feel like we've all been in situations where you don't want to not give a guy your number because you don't want to seem mean. Mm. Okay. No. <laughs> I, I feel so bad. I'm like, I'm like, I don't want to see yeah. him. Or if he's greasing him, I'm like, hi. And she's yeah. the one who actually taught me. That's how she and I was. She was like, you don't greet men when you walk. Because I used to walk to her house all the time. And I would greet every single guy that would greet me. Because when, when you greet back, some of them follow you. They no, do. But here's the thing. Even if you don't greet, that is in many instances their excuse mm -hmm. for like that's victimizing true. even further that's and stuff true. it's it's so risky to say nothing when they're greeting you. that's true it's and so risky to say no when they're asking for your number mm. definitely and i've like read so many things but like this was only in varsity when i'm like people are protesting about rape like rape is so far-fetched in my mm. brain and for it to happen to a girl our age mm. doing the same thing as us like mm. post office mates literally mm -hmm. like mm -hmm doing the most basic thing mm. and then i'm like this is so far for me because my parents were like wear what you want to wear honestly that was my whole life like i could wear as short as i want because my dad and my mom were always like one day you're going to look back at yourself and be like i wish i wore those things mm. like now i feel like i can't wear those things <clears throat> enjoy your life got to varsity was a complete different thing like i was so exposed to the world i was like well this is a lot mm. this is a lot happening at yeah. once and what it's change from back then and now i think i see every man as a threat like you could be greeting me or you, i could have dropped my phone at the gym and you're picking it up and bringing it to me i'm already mm. why are you coming to me why why do you want to talk to me yeah you know like i already paint people as perpetrators and that's bad that's not healthy like mm. i don't have a healthy balance like you but it's because my parents were so carefree and mm. not saying that they were bad parents they yeah. were so carefree and they never instilled fear into me which is also some way in that season healthy but in this season now it's not because now i'm just like fearful of everything yeah. it's like now what now Literally. that you're not there to protect me exactly now, that I'm, not... Like now i'm not in this bubble mm. of my parents house in an estate I go to school that's two seconds away from my house. Right, my yeah. friends are two seconds away from my house. Mm. Like everything was here yeah. for me. Mm. Shops, movies, more, everything was here. Mm. And it's almost like we were in a community, honestly. Mm. Mm. Like everyone knew everything. Benita's mom could pick me up. Your mom could pick me up. Like everything was so like this. And now that like I don't have that, I'm on my own. I live yeah. on my own. It's like when a guy greets me, it's like, yeah. But also, men are just. I think um, on my side, I think I'm somewhere maybe in between the two. I want to grab how we're sitting. <laughs> you know, but in that, so I also had that thing of like, you know, your parents would say, don't wear this there, don't go there because, you know, there's a threat if you do that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I have had the most beautiful interactions with men in my life. Um, I think I've there have been moments where I've been under threat. I remember I was walking home once and um, this man started like running after me. Like he was saying hi hi hi. I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. And he started like chasing after me and I started running, you know, and then he, he stopped, you know. So I've there have been moments where I've been under threat. I've had um, certain places where I've lived where neighbors have, you know, attempted to violate. Mm -hmm. But in terms of so I've had the threat. 
but I've also had the most beautiful interactions and I, I truly thank God for it that nothing happened because one time surprise mom and dad but one time I was on um, a cruise ship right and literally I spent every single night I would go to the gym every night after the gym I would um, hang out by the pool with this 50 year old man every single night and he and he was working there so like he'd be doing his job and I'd sit there and we just like talk and stuff and it was really wholesome conversations like he put me onto some reggae music I put him onto some essay music and it was a beautiful wholesome experience but guys it could have not been mm, you know it was on a cruise easy. ship he could have taken me taken me to his room killed me kept me there and my parents would be like wait like and do you I don't know how know. easy that would have been very easy mm. and I was very young so like I was portable at the time you know so um you know there's that <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but you know even outside of that between the men I have in my life in terms of friendships and you know they have been such gentlemen and like no one in my life a man in my life has ever attempted to violate or anytime I'm like I don't want to do this I don't want to go there has forced my hand or you know anything like that so I've had that beautiful interaction, but I've also had the bad interaction. And I would say for me, right, I find myself, my, how I view men or my relationship with men right now is, I find myself kind of getting more scared by the day. And it's like a tug of war because on one side, I know the beauty yeah. of male relationships. And I also know the horrors of male relationships. But, and also what you said about rape was so far from you and it's not around you but then guys it started happening mm. right by In our doors circle. we all went to yeah. the same high school literally there are people that we know we went to school with that we all sorts of people who have since been violated and it's now it's not uyenene online it's not Karabo online. Mm. It's now Our this friends. person yeah. from who was in your class, who's your friend, who's your. It started. That three out of five woman mm -hmm. is here. Is here. And then you find yourself now being two mm. out of five. Literally. So now the, the three of your friends, I think that the three of your friends have been violated, mm. and you and one more are the, the outliers, the Definitely. one that nothing has happened to. That's Yet. something that. Ooh. Never in Jesus' name. In Jesus name but again. that's something that um, started to become real. Is I had friends come to me and say, "This happened. This happened. This happened." And it was like we all grew up in the same protective little bubble or the same school. So it's like, oh my gosh, if it's happening to them, guys, oh my gosh, mm. it just made it real that it could be me. Yeah. You know. Um, and you always say you used to walk to my house, and she did. But there's a friend of mine who, on the same road you used to walk on. Some men grabbed her and put her into the boots yeah. of a car on the same road same you walked road. on. You know what I mean? In the same area. And we all lived five minutes away from school at the time. Mm -hmm. So it started becoming not something that your mom said. It started becoming a thing of I don't have to go to the dodgy areas for it to happen. Definitely. And I don't have to be in a mini skirt for it to happen. I can be walking home from school mm -hmm. for it to happen. Post mm -hmm. office for it to happen. So I started to feel a sort of anxiety and fear happening where now, like, I, I, I can't believe people do online dating guys because I'm just like are you not scared that this person is going to violate you or rape you or do anything to you because how are you meeting strangers part of me thinks that the fear we have is because of the a reality of the world we live in I do think it's also a bit unhealthy because stuff like that where that's how people meet could meet is at the mall is when you're walking home is when you're doing these things and now no, <laughs> everything is a threat mm. even when they want to hit, hit you up online I don't want to meet you mm. okay fine I don't want to meet you online but I don't want to talk to you in the mall yeah. I don't want to talk to you in the streets yeah you know um, maybe we live in the same res so I don't want to talk to your address don't come to my room mm. or I don't everything becomes a threat and it's like how are you supposed to build and have healthy Thank relationship you. with men yeah. if you are scared of accepting them in every single avenue they come in because of the reality of yeah. the world we find Thank ourselves in i can't blame any woman that is like i'm yeah. not gonna go to the mall and meet you like yeah. don't approach yeah. me at the gym yeah man don't approach me at the gym because don't approach me outside of my apartment mm. don't, don't approach me at school don't approach me when i'm walking alone like mm. Just don't approach me, but also when I'm mad, but don't approach me. Yeah, <laughs> <you know? laughs> it's like Christian, Christian parents, we don't date, 
we just married. Exactly. And I mean, even in church, by the way, don't be mistaken. Like, it's crazy because every single scenario I bring up, guys, I know someone who's been through something. You're saying you opened the door to let him in. I know someone who opened the door for someone, they got raped. You know, same situation as you. It happens at church. I know someone who was violated at church by the priest. You know, so it's like there we go. It can't be church. It can't be school. There it can't is be walking. No safe space. It's a reality. Yeah. yeah, it's a real life thing. There really is no space where yeah. you can say, "I can one hundred percent say that I'm safe here." Yeah, or oh, I'm good here. And it, it has no face. Basically, it has. No. There is no particular no kind of. Either. Not at all. There is no kind of person that's gonna do it. There is no, no you know, so true. you never, you never really know someone, and it goes beyond just like someone that's gonna cheat on you. Yeah. Like you not knowing someone really is, you don't know, guys. Yeah. And and it may not have been you, but that's not to say that the people that you trust, you think you can trust, have not done it to someone else. Ex oh, that's a good one. Is that sure. a man who is your close friend who treats you like a gentleman like this. has like done this something. Job. To someone else and it's even as small as i know i had to speak to my one friend who you know he's a proper gen basically he was rude to someone who rejected him and i was like no you will not do that and i sat him down and i was like that's unacceptable for you to treat someone that way because she rejected you and we had to talk about it but remember guys this same man who treated a woman like that is the same man who for me has yes. been a proper like proper gent proper gent i am not scared when i'm around him and he's never disrespected me but I feel like, I know when, you know how, even with like Black Lives Matter, how we don't want to educate people because you have the resources to educate yourself. But I also feel like it's important in situations like that as a friend of yours that treats you like a gentleman, mm. we also have to call them out mm. for the next girl. Mm. Yeah. For the next girl, it's mm. also, and for gents as well, yeah. it's your responsibility to mm. call out your friends, guy or girl. I don't know about you guys, but like, I always knew rape as violent, dark alley, man wearing all black, mm. you don't know him, stranger. Mm. But then growing up you realize that it could be your family member. Mm. Your boyfriend it guys. Could be your boyfriend. Mm. Could, doesn't have to be penetration. Mm. Oh yeah. That's I literally point. did not know that rape is so broad. Broad. Mm. And then I think we even sat, when we were in high school, we sat with friends and we were like, Talking about all these experiences that we've gone through mm -hmm. and like rape stories. Yes, and rape like stories. But it wasn't even like penetration for everyone. Yeah. But then when you hear somebody else's story, you sit back. I don't know how you felt back. Bro, you're sitting there like, have I been raped? We literally mm -hmm. sit back Genuinely. and we say to, to yeah. each other that like oh, snap. I've been violated. Yeah. Taken advantage of. Yeah. And I didn't even know. Like, I don't want to say anything because oh they're such a nice person to everyone else. Mm. And everybody had everybody in that circle Every had a story by the way. And Every group. Nobody in that circle sat and kept quiet. Every single person had a story. Every single person. And that's why I did a video about gender-based violence where I said we often talk to men and have to say, if someone did this to your mom, to your sister, to your bestie, how would you feel? And I said in that video, and I'll say it again, you don't have to imagine, guys. You just have to ask. You just have to ask. Go to your mom, to your sister, to your friends, and to your daughters, to everyone, and ask them, has anyone ever done anything to you? And you will be surprised what story comes out of the person who you think is living a the perfectly life. normal life. Lavish. You know? Safety. Yeah. So, okay, so that was a, you know, touching on a bit about how gender-based violence has influenced dating and, and how we view men. And before we move on from this topic, I also just want to say, on your tip of educating your friends, we need to educate boys and men, guys. We cannot keep telling women, don't wear this skirt, don't wear shorts. Yeah. We shouldn't have to, us being safe should not be contingent upon wearing long pants and long skirts and by the way which makes like no a, difference which makes no difference because people are raped in churches i read a story about a girl in nigeria she was raped in a mosque and she was a, a hijabi like not even a hijabi she wore like the wait she was a hijabi well she wore like she covered her hair right and then she also wore the the, the body the body outfit i think her face was showing though but in that and it was a child in that outfit she was raped they are babies and i know you might be horrified they are babies as in eight months, literally, literally eight I've months. I've seen a Twitter video. One year. Oh my goodness, of a child. Exactly. And I, I think I called you in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You oh, know. I was so traumatized. And a baby, what are you going to say? Because a baby was wearing diapers. So next time, don't wear diapers. It's not about <laughs> what 
we're wearing and it shouldn't be about that it's time to educate men and boys and tell them that you cannot do this what does yes mean what does no mean because i think a reality is when everything with the gender-based violence thing came out and was big after uyinene a lot of deep conversations happened but that made people realize hold on i was molested i was raped and then but also on the flip side there were guys who were saying wait a minute have i violated someone literally, yes have i really i think i might have effed up guys literally there were people who were having those kinds of reflections so from both sides yeah from both sides have those conversations and educate your male friends your sons your brothers yes it sucks that you have to educate them but it needs to happen. Who else is gonna do it, man? Because you're not gonna educate them. Then go tomorrow. Sorry, I'm not like, gonna no, no, no. Tomorrow is they're gonna go out because they don't know better mm. and go do nonsense. And then what? Not and that it's your fault what they do. It's not your fault, but prevention is a lot better than cure. Definitely mm. in all situations, corona and non-corona. Yeah. <laughs> and that's on period. That's it for today, guys. I hope you liked this video. <laughs> Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. And I will be back with more videos. Please feel free to share your perspective about how gender-based violence has influenced your perspective of men and what change you would love to see within your community, whether it's the men around you or if yourself if you are a man yes. peace and love also guys. also share this Send video it. put it there on your whatsapp family what group the family group yeah. chat needs to know all of them need to subscribe you need to put it there but you can put the link your in your bio. status mm -hmm. listen mm -hmm. all of that thing yes oh, peace and love go. guys